face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And this time, we're looking upon Hexerus versus the comma O. And before going in, I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a small update here where I've not been able to record any footage for this video and it is sadly due to my PC not working the way it should and while I figured that out, I sadly haven't been able to record any footage for these two Pokemon which will mean that we will do this old-fashioned way and that will mean still images about these Pokemon as I compare them. Now of course with that said, Kama O is actually one of the most interesting Pokemon introduced in the recent generation being called a Fighting Dragon type. A very, very, very good one at that. And it being compared against Hexers, it's it's a natural old Pokemon to be compared with. It was either a fighting type or of course another dragon. If we're gonna compare it to another dragon, we're gonna compare it to the offensive dragon that is Hexers being a soul dragon type. And it is up to me to of course go over their ability, moves, and stat pool overall to see of which one of these are really better. So what we're gonna go over first is actually it's typing because Hexers has a soul dragon type versus combos dragon and fighting and they're relevant to discuss because it means that they do different things against a different matchup. Soul Dragon type is usually uh, reliant as a pretty decent defensive typing, not the best. Uh, it does resist electric fire, grass and water, but has issues against its own typing for Dragon and Nice and of course since Generation 6, also Fairy. So there are a lot of weaknesses that are inborn with a Dragon typing, so it definitely should be mentioned that it is not as competent defensively as it was before, but as an offensive typing is really well because very few things does resist the Dragon typing. So as a whole, Haxorus defensive typing, um, run out of the middle basically, it's just your basic Dragon. Uh, going into combo though, being put in Dragon and Fighting, which means you get all the resistances that of course a fighting Pokemon does get because it is a good defensive typing to some extent. So it will resist Bug, Dark, it also get resistances of the course of Dragon already, because Electric, Fire, Grass and Water, but also are resistant to the likes of Stealth Rocks or Rock in general. Uh, with that said, it does have a flutter of weaknesses going on. Outside of course the Dragon, Ice and Fairy combo, you will now have Flying and Psychic, which as a whole is not as seemed like the worst trade-off. Being having more weaknesses is always an issue, so it's always good to have a defensive capability that definitely enforces that your resistances are in etc. Kama could definitely be compared to like of a typical steel type actually being a purple with a plethora of resistances as it comes on naturally, but does have very very key weaknesses. Uh, though clearly with of course the finding type and dragon, those weaknesses are really 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 different but are just as common as ever, and definitely fairy and psychic. Though with that said, as a whole, it's very clear that Kamo, in my opinion here, has the stronger typing. So with that out of the way, we're really just going to look over to their stats, and they peak at different things there, and they definitely are peaking some of them, but the HP stat is where they clearly has the thing that are most in common, 76 versus 75, so in theory, Hexterus has the better HP, but as stated here, it's not by a whole lot. And then we'll come to attack stat. And it's a different kind of ball game between these two. While Kamo has an impressive 110, it is actually is an impressive stat. Hexerus has those golly 147. Why not make it a 150 even? Um, that beats me really. But as a whole there, Hexerus is tremendously more offensively scarier than Kamo. But defensively, um, Hexerus has only 90 versus a 125 on Kamo. It's peaking there really well, just as stated before, as your, your average defensive Pokemon and does it actually fairly well. Uh, special attack here, Hexers does not really bring anything to the table, of course with the 60 is not going to do anything, versus 100 actually on combo, which is fairly decent also as a possible mixed attacker. Uh, while it peaks in his regular attack, it does have a relevance in his special attack. And then we go to of course special events, where also here Hexers special defensive stats is not necessarily that impressive. 70 is I guess at best fair, but with 76 HP it's not going to solve a whole lot for it. Now looking upon Kama, while of course a lower uh, HP than Hexers, it does have a, a lot stronger in its offensive typing here, but of course 105 in its special events, definitely more suitable to take the lives of Psychic Hits and Fairy, much better than Hexers can ever do. And then we come to the speeds here where it does definitely shows that Hexers has a stronger speed here, 96 versus 87 or 85. While 85 is really, really fair as a whole for a defensive Pokemon, Hexers really does shine here, which of course a stronger offensive 
um, attacks that overall with a stronger, stronger speed tier. So as a whole, it's clear that Kamo is a more of a tank type Pokemon that does take hits fairly well and does retaliate on both sides of the, of course, defensive spectrum. While of course Hector is heavily, heavily focused offensively and can utilize, can't utilize anything on the special attack side, but does offensively hurt anything on well every team basically just hurt whatever it does and of course with the strongest speed here is very clear that Hectors is a stronger sweeper while Kama always is definitely a more stronger and more capable uh, defensive Pokemon than Hectors ever could be. Now as you all, all know stats are only as good as the abilities make you out to be. So with that said we're gonna go over Hectors and Kama O's abilities and the differentiation are really really big here because they do different things as a whole. Hectors has Mold Breaker, Rivalry and a Nerve a nerf basically makes sure that you can't use a berry against it, it means such a figure berry on possible Alolan Muck can't be utilized if it has a nerf going on. Rivalry of course boosts your attack stat and special attack stat by 25% if you are the same sex. N very very niche um, as a whole, sadly I should say, um, ability. But when it works, it works. So if you know you're facing a Nidoking, King, this could not be a bad option to actually capitalize on. And of course, last but not least, Mold Breaker, which usually are Hector's bread and butter. What it means basically is that some defensive abilities on other Pokemon will be ignored, such as Mold Breaker, for example, will make sure that levitating Pokemon are no longer levitating. And this could be really good, and also Fur Crow, for example, will not be affected, Static will not be affected. So there are a lot better of ability here with defensively abilities will be completely ignored by Mold Breaker. And this is what makes usually Hector so damn dangerous because it does ignore it completely and just ravage through a team naturally. Now, looking upon Kama though, we have a lot of different things going on and definitely makes it a bit more scarier actually. It, its abilities are, in my honest opinion, stronger than Hector's. I'm just gonna say it straight on that. We have Overcoat first and all, of course, ignores the spore moves on you. You will ignore hazard damage from any type of weather facing, of course, sand and hail and being able to not actually take residual damage from it. Very, very good in weather teams and usually just make sure that you don't have an extra damage onto you. Uh, then we got Bulletproof, which makes any kind of like Shadow Ball, Sludge, sludge Bomb, basically Ball moves, I'm gonna say, but basically Blast moves will be completely ignored with Bulletproof, which is a very, very good ability as a whole. But we also have Soundproof. Soundproof makes sure that you ignore voice abilities, such as, of course, Hyper Voice, Boom Burst, are ignored completely, parting shot are ignored completely, which also kind of emphasize Kama O's defensive plays when it comes to any type of matchup. And being more defensively means a substitute could be an option for Kama O, and being able to not be hit through due to soundproof, it's a very, very good as a whole ability. It does also mean that they really have to break the sub to be able to hit you. Hyper Voice will be ignored completely, and that is a very, very strong thing to have. Kamo. Um, Sterling Added is definitely enforcing that defensive capabilities with all of these abilities to be a very niche to some extent, but you can be extremely selective due to come out as possible matchup against other things. It's definitely workable in the league concept. That said, Hector is a mold breaker, one of the scariest things you ever can face really, and as a whole, it does make it a very, very scary Pokemon. Now the last part we are left are its move pools. Hectors and Kamo does share a plethora of moves, there really aren't that many things that does outshine the other ones over the other, but we're gonna go over of course what they share and what differs between them, because this is definitely what I would say what makes or break any of these type of Pokemon. Kamo introduced this generation will mean that it will naturally have a worse move pool than Hectors. With that said, did Hectors really learn enough to be sustainable to actually triumph over Kamo because as a whole here it's very clear that Kamo is a more fought out Pokemon than Hector's really was and with a secondary typing it's very clear that Kamo's damage output still is just as respectable as Hector's even though it has a lower attack set as a whole. So the first and obvious one is of course Outrage. I don't think that comes as a surprise. They get the heavy stab for their typing and it's a very very good one. They also get actually Dragon Claw if you don't want to capitalize on being confused. The one really also important aspect is its setup moves. It, they both can Dragon Dance, they both can utilize it very well, and it should definitely be stature at these two Pokemon. This is what they do, they Dragon Dance, they hit hard. That's what they do, and they, do, they both do this extremely well, no matter what situation, really. Now, with that said, we have a few extra niche moves that, of course, are worth mentioning. They both can actually utilize a Flamethrower, they both can actually do Focus Blast, and capitalize on special side on least Kamo. Oh, probably not Hexer so much, we also have the likes of Rock Slide, we have Rock Tomb, we have Earthquake, and all these moves are definitely relevant, they also get Payback, Excisor, 
and of course they get the lies of the poison jab and those are the moves that are the most relevant one while i do get others that do share that are not as effective in the meta but these are the ones that define these pokemon so with that said we're gonna of course start talking about what is the difference between them and we're gonna start off with combo actually mainly because it does learn the least new moves since it is such a new pokemon but we have to of course mention it's already really really important attack being the clanging scales which is its unique move for this generation basically it's a specially offensive 110 special attack move from dragon stab which is one of the strongest moves yet to be introduced in the game while it works much like close combat that where it will lower your defense by one is a very, very strong attack overall and definitely very very spammable with of course a spec set in mind we also have, of course, Sky Uppercut, which will be its main stab for the generation. It doesn't get access to either Superpower nor um, Drain Punch or anything like that, which is really unfortunate for it, mainly because it does kind of miss out what I would say a very, very important stab move. Uh, when it comes to setup moves, it gets access to Rock Polish, Autonomize, outside of course the Dragon Dance, and also uh, Belly Drama if you want to capitalize on that, and with, of course, Sub and uh, being soundproof this could be extremely well for it overall and definitely could be capitalized on we also have bulk up which is as a whole a decent filler move but as stated bulk up is probably not what you like swords that would have been a much much more interesting but it still gets it and also on the special side we have flash cannon uh, while it doesn't sound as relevant as I said it before it can capitalize on actually being made for a special side environment which means moves such as of course uh, flamethrower flash cannon uh, clanging scales would do really well. Sally doesn't get Aura Sphere, it gets Focus Blast, that's the stab it's going to be reliant to, which is both a blessing and a curse. It does hurt a lot since it's a 1 20 base move, but also as stated, it is the most famous move for being the most inaccurate move close to the game, and it can definitely punish Kamo due to its Aura Sphere, would have been a much more desirable move, but as stated, due to the secondary stabs in mind, Kamo's damage output is very, very high even though it is not as impressive as extras. Now with that said, those are really smooth for course combo, and as stated, the ability drum subset with sun soundproof, very scary in the right matchup. Now with that said, we're gonna of course talk about the monster that is Haxorus. Now one would be very surprised here, because Haxorus actually till this generation has a worse move pool than combo. It actually is very, very, very unimpressive. Though with that said, those moves that it does get doesn't define it either, but it does get Taunt, which is a very, very important move as a whole. It also gets access to Sword Stance. Sword Stance might not sound too good, but since you have Dragon Dance, but trust me, you're speedy enough to pull up a Sword Stance if the matchup allows it. And if you can pull a Sword Stance of a Dragon Dance, you are just that much scarier due to it. Now, with that said, we also have Shadow Claw as a decent filler move. We have Grass now, you want to capitalize on the special side. And on, of course, its egg move, it does get access to Iron Tail. While Kamo actually gets Iron Head, which I forgot to mention, Iron Tail could be more desirable towards, of course, facing these fairies, and definitely with sea moves in mind. Now, one really sad part is that Dragon Pulse is actually exclusive for Hexers, not Kamo, which also, as I said before, could have been just as reliant, but still, you have the clanging scales, it becomes just irrelevant. Now, when it comes to possible tutor moves here, as stated, Hexer doesn't get a lot, it gets Aqua Tail, that's the relevant one. It does get access to the likes of Low Kick and Super Power, but trust me, you really will need it. It's nothing that Urquid won't solve for it. But as a whole, it's very clear here that also that Kama O yet again proves that being a new Pokemon doesn't mean that you will have a worse move pool, and Kama O yet again does a triumph over Haxorus. So with that said, what it all gonna boils down to is whether or not the Haxorus spiking stats are enough to settle between Kamo because Kamo is defensively more capable, it is offensively due to its move pool, more capable, more varied than Haxorus and could be very well be called the better between them. But in the end of the day, what they do do the best in the game are actually Dragon Dancing and trust me when I say this, it's the Dragon Dance that defines them, and if there is the Dragon Dance that defines them, then Hexers has to be considered better between these two. There is no way actually of going around it. Hexers, due to Dragon Dance and those peaking stats in both speed and offensive stats, really, really has to be the one that are reliant here. And due to C moves in mind, 
Haxorus due to even though it has a lack in mood pool, it does have a relevant one and it's just as relevant as Kamo. While Kamo can do more stuff, it doesn't outshine as well as Haxorus is doing. Haxorus kill things after one Dragon Dance. Kamo might do, but it is more likely that is forced to go for another one or at least a third one to be able to get those hits down. Now with Mold Breaker in mind, your offensive natural capabilities are just peaking from there on out and it's very clear that naturally Haxorus simply are better. Even going down to the Scarf set, Haxorus has a massive damage output and it just really outshines anything that Kamo really ever could do. Till this generation of course is, one might never know if Kamo got access to more moves whether or not it could be capitalized and do better than Kamo or than Haxorus. But as a whole here, it's very clear that Haxorus is the better between these two. Now with that said, thank you of course as always for watching and then join us next time where we are looking upon these guys.